Hello and welcome, Singapore. It's the morning show with me, Kelly Latimer, and the best sister ever, Barbara. Ha ha you it's Wacky that. Wednesdays, where we try our very best to get you through hump day with some good old belly laughs. Get Active TV has you covered from morning till night with morning stretches and sweat sessions, lunchtime catch-ups, afternoon workouts, dinner inspiration, and evening wind down. And somewhere in between all of that, you get us. We love nothing more than to hear from you, and more importantly, throw in some goodies, throw some goodies in your direction with our daily giveaways. Just, just throwing just it out throw there. It. Just throw it out there. Okay, before we throw anything your way, we're going to get a quick look at the COVID-19 numbers updates. 528 new cases, but numbers down, but most importantly, in the Singaporean department, only seven Singaporeans and PRs. This is the first time in a very long time that we have been below double digits. Fantastic work from all our Singaporeans who are really, really doing everything they can to keep us safe. We've got two work passes, one visit pass, so that brings our community cases to a total of 10. Seven work permit holders outside of the dormitories, and again, the bulk still happening in the dormitories with 511 cases. 83% linked to known clusters, which is a downside better than yesterday. That's right. Now, BCA also announced yesterday that you can no longer... Uh, exercise or walk your dogs if you live within a condo compound because apparently it's getting a little bit too crowded with everyone walking their dogs so you can pop outside your condo um, to go for a stroll with your dog and so that they can do their business or your cat if you walk your cat um, or your rabbit or, or your, your gerbil or your hamster or, or whatever terrible. it is whatever animal you are using as an excuse to get outside and get some exercise do it outside in your neighborhood not in your compound and remember if you are thinking of jumping in your car and driving somewhere to go do that nah -uh, you gotta walk around in your neighborhood only only for the necessities mm -hmm. Uh, speaking of travel, yes. So SMRT and Hope Technic have partnered up to convert 20 buses into COVID bus transporters. That sounds pretty cool. So what what do you mean, like? So so it, they is the whole thing in a hazmat like, suit? <laughs> transformed them like uh, what was that movie called? Transformers. Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> they, they pulled the transformer on them. Um, so there are separate compartments for the driver and for the passengers. The driver's compartment has two extra seats for a paramedic and an admin officer or, or whoever needs to be there. And they've got their own aircon system. That's awesome because I have seen a lot of the bus drivers driving with the windows down, but obviously they're still in that circulated air environment, sharing it with the rest of the passengers. So it's exactly. good to see that if we are using it as a vehicle to transport, especially our foreign workers and stuff yeah. like that, then at least we're keeping our frontliners even safer than before. So they are coming up with a version two, yes. um, which is going to involve a negative pressure system for the patient compartment and added protection that will be scrubbed and cleaned before ve being vented out. So another 30 of those are going to be added on, which is just absolutely fantastic. Wow. If you're interested in joining this, I mean, anyone with a class four driving license can apply. You just need to get in contact with SMRT. Wow, so shout out to all of our bus drivers, grab drivers, taxi drivers who have been volunteering so far to uh, to commit to being a frontliner. Thank you so much for your service and the dedication that you have been putting out there to keep us safe really is very commendable. That's right, and to reward you just a little bit, good things must be shared. We've got giveaways happening every single day. Now today... It's all about being part of the Fit Fam. That's right. We've got vouchers from local brand Kydra to be given away. We've got $20 vouchers, which takes a chunk off when it comes to uh, retail therapy, given mm -hmm. that we can't go out and shop now. It's all about that online business. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to lie. I have been spending just a little bit because it makes you feel better. Oh, it makes you feel better. Yes. Yes. And okay. I'm supporting the local businesses. That is true. That is true. <laughs> Support local. Kydra is a homegrown local brand. Their stuff is super comfortable. And if you hadn't had a chance to try it yet, here is your opportunity. Right. What do they have to do, Barbara? All you need to do is like and share the Get Active TV Facebook page. Um, share the morning show onto your page. So you want to make sure that your profile is public. And just tell us. What's your favorite workout been on Get Active TV so far? Wow. I mean, we've got so many. Yeah. We've had like the boxing guys, the half athletic guys, you've got uh, yoga, pilates, yoga, pilates, stretches. Everything. Yeah, whatever or, you need, we have something what? for you. And we've even incorporated our seniors as well in our early risers That's first right. thing in the morning. Couldn't get any easier. Now, we are going to go for a little break, but when we come back, I'm going to be stretching it out like dancers do. Oh, dear.
I've swapped Kelly out for someone a little taller and a little bit more tan. I have with me the ever beautiful Adeline Stanley. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You might have seen Adeline around. She's in these beautiful Changi Airport ads just casually with her leg all the way up there in a split. Um, so Adeline is a professional dancer. Um, you've been all around the world. Before yeah. we get into that and before we get into today's uh, stretch, I went for one of your movement therapy workshops. Yes, you did. A couple of <laughs> months ago. Um, you know what? I'm just, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to let the final choreo speak for itself. Try and spot me if you can. <laughs> Just being replayed. Yeah. <laughs> so there was that. Um, it was it was great. I mean, we learned so much about our bodies, uh, and and whew, yeah, what a memory. So you run a lot of these <laughs> workshops that uh, revolve around movement therapy, and you're trying to encourage people who aren't necessarily dancers or have no. done dance before to join. Tell us a little bit about these these movement therapy workshops. Absolutely. I mean, for me, being a professional dancer is one thing, and teaching dance is another. And for me, all, I'm all about just teaching non-dancers how to move because I feel like that's the most important thing to get in touch with the bodies, connecting your mind and your body. So movement therapy is really just based on dance improvisation, somatic practice. You know, it helps us to like de-stress, break down tension through 21st century living. Um, really just connect, connect everything. Okay. Nice and long. Um, and talk to me, before we get into it, a little bit about Inala. So Inala was this amazing performance that I didn't even get to catch because I wasn't in the country when it was here in Singapore. Um, but you guys traveled all over. And how was that? How was being in Inala? It's amazing. Like, there are actually no words. It's phenomenal. I got to perform for the British royal family, met Prince William and Kate. Oh, what's up? <laughs> I mean, hanging out with the yeah. royals. Touring the world, I guess like that was, I mean, I never thought I would get that opportunity. I've seen parts of the world I never thought I would travel to, Russia, China. Uh, and just working with Grammy Award winning choir and singers, that's just a dream come true. I don't think I can ever get that again, but wow. it's really, yeah. Ooh, okay, so um, I'm in a dress, mm -hmm. but like <laughs> I've got shorts on so I can still do this stretch. Um, so. <laughs> We've seen how a non-dancer moves, with me as a prime example. But uh, okay, maybe you can just guide us through how do, how would someone engage in movement therapy at home who doesn't necessarily how to like move their body. Cool, cool. So we're gonna. I won't say stretch. Stretch is a, a big word for people. I feel like that gets it's a bit intimidating. Okay. So let's just start with a bit of breath work, and then we'll slowly do do some active movement and stretching, if that's cool. cool. I can do breath work, I can breathe, I do it on the daily. Right. All right. Do you want me to face you? Um, face we breath. can do... Diagonal, yeah. I think that's cool. So we're just focusing, just eight breaths. We're going to inhale, exhale to the right, inhale, exhale to the left. So just like eight Like the whole times. body? Like the whole body, kind of. So don't think about going somewhere. I think it's just about melting, letting your body melt <laughs> to the right. Y'all can't see, but everyone <laughs> in the studio is laughing at me. You can tell how awkward I am. Okay. You know those like um, petrol kiosks, like those, oh, those the, things? Yeah, yeah. You know, so if you inhale, That's it goes me. up. Okay. Exhale, just let everything loose on one side. That's it. Inhale, coming up. I need to wipe the grit off my nice face. Nice deep breath. <laughs> exhale to the left. Oh, your whole body's okay. Yeah, inhale. Exhale to the right. Got some of the crew inhale. doing this too. Excellent. Exhale to the left. Just four more. Inhale. If you're at home, you can join us. I'm, join I'm us. <laughs> inhale, coming up. Fall where you would. That's it. Just relax your arms, relax your neck. Mm -hmm. Two more. Exhale. Really important to inhale through the nose. Oh. Exhale through the mouth. Good. And just finding a bigger stance. Okay. We're just going to keep our legs straight. We'll rock our weight forward to the balls of our feet uh -huh. and then back to the heels. So just eight times. I like I'm super tense when I do this, but it's so fluid. So Two, I'm going to try and relax a little bit more. Three, four, very nice. Five, oh, thanks. 
six. Got some validation right there. Seven Woo. and eight. And now we're going to hinge from the hip just to stretch out a little bit of the hamstring. So right here, we're into our flat back. So energy out through the top of the hip. So not the forehead because you're going to break your neck. No, oh, not really, okay. but the line's going to be broken. So top of the hip and tailbone. From here, we're going to stay here. We're going to bend our knees. And then we'll articulate our spine by rolling up. Nicey, shall I go back? <laughs> oh, back. Sorry, can you just repeat that one more time? From here, From the bent knees. our tailbone's going to come in. Our tailbone. And then let our body just rise again. So oh. four times. Oh, four, oh, okay, four times. Again. Okay. With the breath, cool. inhale. So we hinge. Exhale, hinge. And then we bend our knees. Then we roll up through the spine, relaxing your chest while we do that. And twice more. That's it. Nice long hamstrings. And rolling up. Last one, hinge, bend your knees, rolling up. Cool, now bring it to hip width apart. Nice, we're gonna do some rolling down sequence so it's not too intimidating. Oh, is it? That's <laughs> not intimidating? Cool, 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 cool. So, and the roll down and roll up, all you need to really think about is which part of your body initiates the movement, right? So in the rolling down, we're just going to drop our head. Let the weight of your head take you down as far as you can. So, yes, perfect. From here, we're going to let our arms lead us up into a flat back. You went down much further than I did. <laughs> okay, arms up so into arms a flat back. arms up into a flat back. Okay. Nice, so it's like and a, arms down. Oh, it's like a... It's, like a it's a little wave. Really we're gonna yeah, <laughs> now it's working. Okay. It's like can do. Yes, and then okay. so far of that. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, okay. sure, let's go. So roll so down. Three more. Rolling down, bring the arms nice, long and up. Excellent, coming down. <gasps> Twice more. Look at me being all. So this is amazing to do in the mornings, just to get our body ready and, you know, ready for the day. Last one. In the last one, we're just going to leave our hands to come up because we're going to reverse the whole thing. So we're going to hinge down now, hinge flat back. down, flat back. And then rolling up through the spine. Keep your legs straight. <sighs> Excellent. Three more. And rolling up. I hope you guys are doing this at home as well. I'm feeling real yes, fluid right please. now. Yes, <laughs> hmm, Last one. I have a tendency to get overexcited and I completely forget what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Whee. Excellent. Well, and hey. shake it out. Look at me being a dance. And usually yeah. usually in the class I'll just get people to kind of just groove, just shake it out, you know, no oh, judgment. Yeah. Oh, You're yeah. in your own bedroom. Just yeah. move. Yeah. <laughs> no? Okay. Cool. Yeah. What next? <laughs> what next? We can open and close our chest. So this one is again breath work. So we're gonna walk diagonally, kind oh. of rock our body to the front oh. and rock back. Good. So this is gonna be the feet, the pattern of the feet. And then we're going to change, ball change, oh. <laughs> and go to the left. So that's what the feet's going to do. Oh. And the legs. Oh, we're so doing now we're, we're going to coordinate. So uh -huh. now we're going to do upper body. So okay, cool. we're going to inhale, open, oh, exhale, contract through the chest. You do that again? <laughs> yeah. Here. And here. Inhale, exhale. Whew. Last one. Inhale. All right, I've got to breathe. Okay. Exhale, and changing legs. Changing direction, sorry. And we go inhale and exhale, inhale, exhale. Just so just three times. I am very aware that I am now <laughs> I look a bit silly on national TV. Change but it's direction. all good as long as you're having fun at home. Okay. Yeah, so okay. we actually go through seven different states of tension and oh. movements. Okay. So if you come for the class, <laughs> you yes. know this. Well, okay, so so just by doing those, I actually feel like my joints are a little bit warm. Mm. I haven't quite broken a sweat, but my joints are warmer. I do feel a little bit more relaxed, less stiff in the body, yeah. which is great. So, okay, speaking of your classes, yes. you've just started a, like a whole course? Yeah, like a movement course, an online movement course, because you know we're all <laughs> social distancing, <laughs> you know, it's no studios. <laughs> so it's uh, 22 sessions mm -hmm. for $22 each, yes. which is so cheap for the quality of professionalism Thank that you. you're getting. And this happens like, how many times a week do people go for this? Twice a week. Twice a week. One hour each session. One hour each session. Yeah. And so what is it, Tuesdays and... Tuesdays and Fridays, 7 to 8. Okay, so it's a nice evening slot yeah. after people have finished with work because even though we're working from home, you still got to get stuff done. You probably sat down all day, so you kind of need to move. Get your oh, body moving. that's so yeah. nice. <laughs> and you, you do it from home? Yes. 
with oh, the, the setup is a struggle, but <laughs> you started doing these 10, 10 for 10, 10 at 10? 10. 10 at 10. So it's a 10 minute groove session at 10 a.m. every morning. It's on like Instagram Live. Uh huh. So you go onto my profile every day at 10. And then you catch me there just moving on my balcony. Kind of to oh, any song. Oh, that's cute. So that, that one's not a class. I just Clearly to, not happening today, you know. though, because <laughs> we got her in studio. Just a disclaimer, it's not a class, that one. It's just an invitation for you guys to join, because I think social media has its barriers, and you know people feel so judged all the time. So mm -hmm. I'm not asking you to do live yourself, but it's just to join me and just moving the body with jam, no judgment. Jam along with it. Yeah. I always feel so fluid when I'm with Adelaide. It's just, it's just nasty. Feeling <laughs> um, cool. Well, and you also do personal training, right? I do. So one-on-one, -on -one, like Coaching, web sessions, web sessions um, for dance, for fitness, for for dance mostly. Okay. So whether it's whether you want to go into vocational training to become a professional dancer, or even if it's just you want to sleep better, or just do yoga better, or cycle better, and just yeah. have being more confident in the body. I think that's what. Is the main goal. <laughs> cool. And look, it doesn't matter if you turn out like how I did on that video. I had a lot of fun, and that's the main important thing. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank so glad you. that you could come on and guide me through that stretch. I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling 50 shades of fluid right now. Um, we're going to pop off for a quick break, but when we come back, we'll be teleporting to catch up with Esther in the Netherlands. back to the morning show with Kelly and Barbara. Now our next guest for today couldn't come into the studio, not because she's at home during our circuit breaker, but more like it's a little bit difficult to hop on a flight. From the Netherlands. Yeah. Welcome Esther, thank you for joining us here on today's show. How are you? I'm doing good. This spring arrived, so everybody is just quite happy at home, <laughs> enjoying the sunshine from home. I was going to say, are you actually getting to enjoy it or are you <laughs> in the Netherlands a bit like how we are stuck at home in Circuit Breaker? Yeah, um, we also have some lockdown measures. Uh, the thing is, we have a little balcony outside our apartment, so we're quite blessed to be able to just sit there and enjoy the mm -hmm. sunshine. And also, like, um, even though we cannot go outside as much as before, we realise that it really helps you to not take these things for granted, you know, 
just the fact that you can sit on a chair outside on your small little balcony and get sunshine, that's, that's good enough. That's something to appreciate. Definitely. So tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, why you're in the Netherlands, how is it? So um, I came to the Netherlands two and a half years ago because my husband found a job here and, you know, we thought, okay, maybe it's time to search for a new life, open a new chapter. Um, previously, I used to be an actress and musician, mus mus <laughs> musician in Singapore. But, um, so that's why some people would find you familiar, right? Because uh, you've also been in Marco Polo, um, yeah. you used to sing, and like you're, you're also, you also won Best Actress for yeah, a movie that you Birdie did. Yeah, Birdie told us about that. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little cool. bit about that. Um, that was pretty unexpected. So um, I met the director, Nicolas Pacheco, at NYU Tisch, Singapore, and he wanted to do this feature film for his end of year assignment. And um, we did it very quickly, at a very low budget, in just one week. And then a few years later, he submitted it for the two film festivals back home, back, back at his home in um, Costa Rica. And surprisingly, I won. I was going to say, actress. you didn't just win one film festival, you won two. You won both yeah. the Costa Rica Film Festival and the Film Icaro Film Festival in 2014, which is pretty insane. Yeah. It was insane, because like, I woke up one morning. I mean, this was, I think, three years after the movie was done. So like, I completely forgot about it, you know. And then suddenly I get a call and say, good morning, you just won Best Actress at the Costa Rican Film Festival. I'm like, what? And I had Costa Rican reporters messaging me on Facebook, wanting to interview me for the national newspaper. And wow. I was like, what? What is that? That is so cool. Really cool. Did you have to fly <laughs> over there or something to collect your award? Or was it all just done virtually and they were like, hey, good job, well done? Yeah, basically the letter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they had the budget to fly me over. So. Oh, it would have been such an experience though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. It was, it was a tiny little pat on the back, a little bit of validation for all the hard work. So it was and nice. Did much change for you after, you after you'd gotten that award? I guess it gave me a little bit more cred, I suppose. <laughs> but interestingly, like, I realized that despite all these little milestones and all that, I still remain fundamentally me. You know, I don't really think that much has changed. I'm still me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so nothing changed even after you did like Marco Polo, which was a huge resounding success here as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, that was interesting. It was very interesting because before Marco Polo, I would say I, I, I always had been more of a low-key person, mm -hmm. quite the underdog and just, you know, I was just a happy working actress doing whatever came my way. And then Marco Polo came and suddenly, you know, eight days wanted to interview me, they wanted to interview me, you know, and getting to meet all these international stars, it was, I don't know, like a part of me always felt like I wasn't really ready for that. You know, I always felt very strange, like a fish out of water because, because like I've always been so comfortable being low, yeah. you know? Awesome. So tell us a little bit about um, what you do now in the Netherlands. Netherlands, you teach, right? Netherlands. Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I teach. I teach full time. Um, I have my own little singing establishment called Heart and Soul Singing. And um, I formed a very nice, cozy community. So in Dutch, um, there's this word called gezellig, which literally translated to English means a warm and cozy feeling that you feel in your heart when you're with the right group of people. Oh. Wow. Safe it's distancing. Like me when I'm with you. <laughs> Except safe distance. In my heart. Um, <laughs> but but was, it, was it hard for you to adapt? I mean, going over there, do you, did you have to learn how to speak Dutch and, or is everything in English for you? Everything's in English because okay. um, Dutch people, it's mandatory for the Dutch to start learning English as a uh, full-on second language from the ages of 10. So everybody can speak very good English here. Oh. And also like when they hear you struggling in Dutch, they would immediately swap to English. 
So it's quite difficult to practice the language here as well. And also Dutch is a very difficult language to pronounce. Yeah, it doesn't sound yeah. easy at all. There's yeah. a lot of like guttural hacking <laughs> going on. <laughs> okay, so as a Singaporean yeah. overseas then, um, how has COVID affected you in terms of your family? I mean, was there any urge or desire for you to come back home and, and be with your family here? Well, actually, we were supposed to go back in February for my best friend's wedding. Oh. But I think that was when COVID first arrived in Singapore. Yeah. And at that time, over here, we were like, oh, if you, if you fly to Singapore, then you need to uh, uh, quarantine yourself for 14 days before you start work back here in Europe. So we thought, mm. okay, maybe we shouldn't take that risk and it's just not worth it if we have to quarantine ourselves for so long after that. And so I had to miss my best friend's wedding. Oh. But it's so ironic because then it became really, really bad in Europe. And yeah. not so bad in Singapore. It so, was funny yeah. how quickly yeah, the tables turned and Singapore went from being the bad guy globally to like, <laughs> oh, actually, the numbers are really small in comparison. Like, but, but I think that was always going to be a problem with Europe. And I think we saw that quite quickly with how, it, how fast it spread throughout going from Italy and then obviously spreading throughout. But your family, are they okay? How have you been keeping in touch? Um, through Skype. Yeah, they're okay, they're okay. Um, my mom, she has started painting at home. So that's very nice. She sends me Barbara pictures tried painting, painting this week. Can it, we didn't, just... it didn't go so well. <laughs> Can we stop talking about this? <laughs> we brought it up every day at every sure, chance. Sure, sure. <laughs> You don't want to see it. Um, yeah, yeah. So your mom started painting. Yeah, and that's lovely. And also, I send my best friends care packages just to make them feel like you know they're not forgotten. We're still friends, and that this yeah. lockdown, the distance, will not keep us apart. And Do you I feel like yeah. now with this lockdown situation, kind of globally, you and your friends are keeping in touch a little bit more than you used to. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I think everybody is just craving for human connection, you know? So I actually just spent my birthday at home. Oh, happy birthday. April. Yeah, happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. And it did not at all feel like a birthday in isolation. Yeah. Because I think like a lot of people were just making more efforts to make me feel loved. So I, my, my best friends actually ordered special delivery for fine dining oh, to my wow. place. Wow. Yeah, and so it didn't at all feel like you're in Singapore, I'm here, there's no way we can show love. No. With the wonders of technology, anything can happen. Oh, well, thank you so much for sharing your experience. I think it's really nice to hear from Singaporeans overseas just because like sometimes we, we just you're a voice that often gets lost amongst everything else. We get so tied up in what's happening on our shores, forgetting that actually there are lots of people who haven't come home mm. um, that we still need to reach out to. So thank you for sharing and just being so open with how you're dealing with everything over there. And hopefully you'll be able to come home soon, see yeah. your best friends, see your mom. <laughs> and you, who knows, you can come on the show, you know? Yeah. Hopefully there'll be no circuit breaker at that point. Therefore, you can come on the show with your mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Just before we yeah. go, do you have yeah. any messages that you want to send to your friends or your family? Um, this is all going to be over soon and we just all have to keep really positive, open-hearted and if anything, this is a learning opportunity for all of us. You know, we can only grow from this and yeah, don't let the negativity consume our minds so much. Amazing. All right. Once again, thank you so much for being on the thank show. Thank you. We're going to go you, for a quick break, but we've got lots more stuff coming your way.
Welcome back to The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara. Apologies there for the internet. I think it was just having a bit of a, a day, feeling a little bit overwhelmed. So the uh, sinking was a little bit off there. But you know what? is even better is when we can actually get a guest in studio. So we've still got safe distance between us, but ladies and gents, welcome Alan Wu. Alan, thanks so much for coming in and joining us on this Wacky Wednesday. I mean, who better to have than someone who's absolutely wacky about fitness? Exactly. Uh, it's great to be here. It's great to be out. I didn't know there was anything being filmed at this point, though, too. So this is a very, very uh, pleasant relief to be here. It's, it's just nice to actually see other people. Sometimes. It is, without masks on to yeah, see all of you. Yeah, I know. You know it's like, it's really weird. It's like, unless you have that smize going on, like a really good smize, you can't actually tell if someone's just like giving you an evil eye or actually smiling at you behind a mask. Exactly. It's, it's bad. Okay, so how's COVID been treating you? It's been all right, actually. I think, uh, I mean, there are moments, you know, I think where um, you might be a little bit bored. You might be wondering what to do. But I think this is a good time for everyone to kind of like maybe take a step back, um, take care of their family. But mm -hmm. I think even more importantly, get active and stay fit or, or get in shape. I think there's a lot of opportunities here at home. I think as we um, go into a situation like this with this pandemic, it's a good time for people to kind of refocus and recalibrate themselves and focus on what's important for them. I think during times like this, you know, from an economic standpoint and I think also from a uh, from an overall standpoint, I think we will never ever stop, I think, investing in our children. I think people are realizing we won't want to stop investing in our in our health, in our fitness too. So it's been fun. I've had a lot of fun trying to find, devise ways to keep myself busy and <laughs> somewhat maintain a semblance of, of being fit. And it's been fun. You know, I think we're very, very lucky to be in a age of social media, of mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, where we can stay connected, maybe not physically, but I think online still be connected with the world. Now, you, my husband, and a few other people like Yui are one of our race car drivers here in Singapore. You're, you're all doing this plus 10 challenge. Tell us a little bit about that. That is actually pretty exciting. I think um, I've always, I think since a young age, has always been into sports. And I think, but a lot of times as we get older, people get a lot of caught, they get caught up raising their children, they get caught up with work, with their social engagement. So I figured this is a good time for us to kind of like maybe take a step back and do something that's very easy to do at home. Everyone's very, very familiar with the push up. So I thought, I see a lot of in home workouts, you know, where you can do maybe Tabata or, or you can do a HIIT workout where you do maybe 10 or 20 different exercises. But I think um, for me, and I think for some of these guys, and even girls too, the push-up is probably one of the best universal exercises to just help build or maintain, I think, uh, your upper body, your upper body strength without using any equipment. So I thought we could continue to do maybe 10, 20 push-ups every day, but I thought, why don't we do this challenge where we push ourselves every day out of that comfort zone to you know stay in shape but maybe even get strong along the way so i decided to just have this little fun challenge called the plus 10 challenge and it's been great to see the response with with friends with other celebrities with fitness you know i think fanatics and also with people that normally don't work out so it's been uh, a great way i think a great opportunity for everyone to kind of you know give it a shot in the beginning it was obviously quite easy maybe just 10 push-ups but every single day from there we've been adding 10 push-ups and today what, what after are you at day, now? we are at 220 now 220 Okay, so when Circuit Breaker got extended, um, what was the first thought that went through your mind? Yeah, I think we were planning on, the, the goal original was to just go to 300 push-ups for yeah. one day and then stop there. And then the CB got extended and I started getting these messages. Everyone's like, are we going to keep on going? Are we going to keep on going? That would be about 550 to 600 push-ups in one day. And I was like, um, I mean, realistically, we could do it, but I think for a lot of people, I mean, for the hardcore people like, like your husband, like Justin, like we're going all the way to 550. <laughs> but I'm thinking we have to also take into consideration everyone else that wants to do it too. So at this point, I'm thinking if you want, if we want, we can still do these push-ups all the way to 550 or 600. But I think it'd be nice to maybe balance it with a lower body type of move. So maybe we'll continue it. But then I'm thinking um, you can either like break it up into push-ups or maybe jump squats. So that way you could do that 100 sounds, jump squats. That sounds way worse. 100 jump squats sounds awful. Yes. But if, I guess if you break it down, so if you were to do 550 push-ups, mm -hmm. every half an hour for 10 hours, you could do 25 push-ups. Uh, push you could. Right? That, yeah. would, that, would, that, that would 50, 50 times, oh no, you'd need to do 11 hours. Okay, yeah. 11 hours of every half an hour you do 25 push-ups, that sounds like torture. It's actually about five hours, yeah, it's 25 every half an hour, that's, a, that's 50 each, uh, yeah, oh yeah, that is 10 hours, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So I would try and do, I think for some people, they see some of us doing it, mm. and we can get it done maybe in less than 10 minutes. Yep. All of it, right, you know, but then for others, I, I, even some of our friends that aren't as, I think, they haven't been doing that many push-ups in the beginning, you can just break it up starting up in the morning and then working your way up to, uh, 
it depends, I, I guess, on your fitness level. If you can do a lot at once and get it done, but if it takes more time than just you have all day, you have 24 hours. You can wake up in the middle of the night and do it if you want. Oh, you know. that doesn't sound like a nice prospect at all. Yeah. Okay, so fitness aside then, let's talk a little bit about work. Obviously, mm. you're in the entertainment industry. You host events, you host TV shows. All of that has essentially been shut down. What, what's work looking like for you at the moment? Work is honestly quite bleak right now. I think um, in terms of actually hosting events, any large engagements, I think as you know too, um, everything's been pretty much wiped off the map. And <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> honestly, I do not know when it's going to come back too. It'll be a lot longer. Even when we start reopening up, I think the economy, different, I think, sectors in, in the industry, um, it'll be a long time, I think, before we start doing D&Ds, product launches, you know, I think events of that, that scale. Um, so that's one, I think, uh, consideration we have to kind of like think about. But I think, um, luckily, I think there's social media, so there's still a chance to stay in contact with um, clients, with our followers, with people that, that seek advice or, or are inspired, I think, too. So hopefully companies, as they start opening up their marketing budgets, right now a lot of companies in retail, F&B, and everything, too, have frozen their marketing budgets, too. So they don't even have the budget you know, to market their products because, one, um, people can't really buy anything. They can't really go into stores and get it, unless it's online, I think, though, too. So a lot of companies now are actually I think exploring e-commerce too. Even luxury brands, you know, are looking at developing an, an e-commerce online platform. I think too, just make sure they can get access, people can get access to their products. So for me, I think it's uh, right now. Obviously, there's no excuse for me. I think to just kind of do this plus ten challenge to work out, stay in shape. But also, um, some of my products are in China also. So right now, China's opened up. Yeah, you know, I was they say, started China, working. They've, they've started going back to school. They're 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 actually continuing life, aren't they? Yeah, they're pretty much almost. I wouldn't say as per normal. Obviously, they're still a little bit vigilant. I think in terms of uh, outbreaks, but. The problem with China right now is they're not letting any foreigners in. And I have a project that probably might hopefully be happening as soon as June. Ooh. But, you know, the problem is even if I get am allowed in there, there might be a 14-day quarantine. So not only do we have to uh, take into consideration um, the work there, it's also these quarantines. Anytime we travel now, it's, it's a huge question mark. So a lot of, you know, there's a lot of gray areas, a lot of questions to be, to be answered, I think, in the weeks and the months to come. But hopefully this will all pass, you know, I think, uh, for everyone and everyone is, comes out of it better. And how are the kids handling it? Kids are great. They're doing well. I think right now, I think uh, they go to international school, so they're doing all the home-based learning right now. I think the kids in general are a little bit bored, so it's, I think it's up to each child's, I think, uh, personality, I think, to try and stay, I think, you know, on top of their schoolwork, and even more importantly for me, um, to stay active and to stay fit. It's been hard for me because they stay with their mothers, so I don't see them as much, and we're trying to, I think, respect and abide by the laws, so I don't spend that much time with them. Um, but I know they're going out there, going on their own little runs, Running That's is probably yeah, it's they're, great. they're active kids as well, which is yeah, great to see. They're very, very active. So if people want to follow the challenge, it's just the hashtag plus ten challenge. That's all it is. Out, yeah. Check out the Instagram page. Alan, thank you so much for thank sharing. Uh, I want to get you to drop down and just do ten right now. Come on. Drop down, do drop, 10? Drop, down drop down and start adding oh, to your ten whilst I throw to a break. Uh, thank okay. you so much for joining us, Alan. Whilst he does that, uh, we're gonna go for a short break. And when we return, it'll be Cheryl Lowe breaking it down on how you can skip and look cool. Don't go anywhere. Good All job. right. Thank you. <laughs>
and we're back. Don't forget, we've got $20 Kydra vouchers to be given away. So hurry, 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 like and share the morning show on Facebook and tell us what's been your favorite workout on Get Active TV so far. Now, given that we should be avoiding going out as much as possible, there aren't that many ways that we can get that same type of gentle cardio in as, as you do for running and jogging. So earlier on today, our resident skipping sensation broke down her niche just for us, and you can even do it without a rope. Welcome back to Break It Down here on The Morning Show. We've got Sheryl with us this week. She's been in breaking down all these different body weight exercises for us. Now, Cheryl is just known for her <laughs> being a skipping sensation. Um, I think we shot some stuff before and she's absolutely insane. She's got like a ropes just going everywhere <laughs> and just twining around. Um, but today, because skipping is something that you can do at home, um, you don't have to go out, but it's a really good form of cardio. It's really yep. good for uh, warming up as well. Um, you just need to make sure that you don't hit the ceiling fan or anyone else in your vicinity. Uh, but we're going to break that down. Um, how to skip. Yeah, that's actually basically what we're going to be doing today is breaking down the movement. Just regular skipping, no, no, not defensive full ropes going around stuff uh, today. Just okay. basic technique on skipping. Oh. Yeah, just the basic technique on skipping. So a lot of uh, people have asked about, um, well, I, I keep making mistakes. How, what, what am I doing wrong? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I just keep making mistakes. Catching so on my I, foot, yeah, you So know. I, I just decide not to do at all. Yeah, so I got we do marks on my legs, I got yeah. whip marks on my arms. Yeah, so it's actually a quite a bit of technique involved, uh, simple things to take note of, and then you will be able to put it into practice and you'll be able to do like string up 50 skips in a row. Uh, yeah, and Ooh. it's actually, yeah, like you said, it's a very good cardio or calorie burn exercise. Mm -hmm. and instead of going out for a run, you can just find a space uh, just big enough for your rope to go around. Because yeah. we're supposed to stay at home. Yeah. Um, um, okay, so what if in the event, given that pretty much everything is sold out at Decathlon nowadays, let's be honest, I don't have a skipping rope at home. Oh, uh, you can just use two pens or markers. Uh, we have them over oh, here. Oh, magically. Yeah. I got two pens here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so imagine you're holding on to the handles of a skipping rope. So yeah. you know, like uh, the term shadow gonna, boxing. It's like shadow skipping. Oh, shadow yeah. Skipping. So, we, uh, but before we start that, we're going to be talking about how we are uh, working on your arms, hands positioning. Okay. And then you can practice without, if let's say you don't have a rope at home, you can practice without a rope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for skipping, regular skipping itself, you want to make sure your elbows are tight in towards your waist instead of because most people they start uh, they start like that and, and then the moment you start skipping the hands go out like they're just flapping around with the, the whole like arm super wide yeah the, this shortens the rope a lot and you're going to be making a lot of mistakes but the problem is we don't usually see it ourselves mm -hmm. if let's say you're skipping on your own you don't get to see it on your uh, by yourself so you can put a video or you video uh, yourself in front and then you get to review after that's how you learn actually Quick question before we actually get into the movement itself. Um, I think something that a lot of people have trouble with is what height should my skipping uh. rope be? Like, is it too long? Is it too short? Yeah. Like, how do I know what's the right height for a rope for me? Yeah, that's a good one. So for before, yeah, before we even start anything, the rope itself, it has to be, uh, let's say, armpit level or chest level. But for me, usually it really depends. I don't really like to use the, um, the gauge of your you know, armpit because uh, everyone holds their rope differently. Mm -hmm. And then depending on your body and the hands position, your rope length is, has to be different. Okay. Yeah, so usually I, I just estimate with uh, maybe the chest and the armpit level that's so, it so, so you don't look at these uh, two things sticking out that's just the excess <laughs> so, so boob height yeah boob top, height. top of boob to bottom of boob okay <laughs> cool I mean, yeah boob ladies height. that's a good gauge <laughs> so for this one this is a good gauge when you step uh, two feet on the rope actually so this is a good gauge but I usually like to start by skipping a few times mm -hmm. to try out the length uh, itself because everyone turns differently and yeah. the length itself it should be about one headroom space on top okay so, so you yeah, don't want it to be like grades in your ponytail okay. yeah correct and then you don't want it too long as well because if it's too long it's gonna hit the ground too hard and it rebounds and that's why it keeps tripping on your feet oh. yeah so it has to be just nice 
Science, yeah. guys. <laughs> Science. So yeah, so when you uh, jump a few times, you're gonna, yeah, you won't be able to see it uh, unless you have a mirror right in front of you, but you can take a video and in just a few seconds, just, just to check. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've got the length sorted out, you know how to adjust your rope. I mean, you can always tie a knot in it yeah. if it's too long, um, just on the edges. Cool. And then, next one. Step two. Step two. So just going straight into the regular skipping, when you see the rope coming down in front of you, go for it. Do that help. But the main thing is when you're turning the rope, turn with your wrist. The first turn is always the biggest turn where you move the whole arm. Mm -hmm. But then after the first turn, you want to make sure it's wrist movement. See how my wrist is just my wrist moving. I'm not doing this. Yeah, there's very minimal this, like this movement is like, in the elbows. Yeah. You just kind of roll with it. Yeah, just roll with it, just roll using the wrist. And I think a lot of people are used to holding weights, like dumbbells, mm. and then they think that this is, you know, the, because you're doing an exercise, you tense up the whole thing, you just, you just tense up the whole thing, it's not as smooth. Mm. So you want to relax, it's actually a very light uh, it's equipment. A light, it's a light yeah. movement. You just relax, go with the flow, turn the wrist, turn the wrist, and stay light on the feet. And the trick to, Lasting longer mm -hmm. and skipping is actually keeping a core tight. Oh, yeah, because okay. most of the time when we jump, when we relax, there's a jumping downwards movement where it's a lot of energy absorbed into the ground. So you want so to very much time. like boxing, you want to be light and yeah. grounded at the same time yeah. and engaged. Right, <laughs> multitasking at its finest. Cool. So next thing I want to ask is. Um, Feet, okay, so A, obviously you've got your jump, you want to be nice and soft in your knees, yep. heels off the ground? Heels off the ground, yes. Okay. So as much as possible, heels off the ground. So you're, le you're letting your knees absorb that weight, so yep. no big pressure on your knees, try not to thud down. Um, okay, double leg versus single leg. I'm not going to lie, when I first started skipping, I could only do double legs, and they're like, oh, you're going to get tired so easily, do yeah, single correct. legs, and Actually I just couldn't. Yeah, so the double leg is very tiring, actually. So yeah. it, most people think that oh, if you go single leg, it looks more tiring, but actually that is the way to last longer. Yeah. yeah. So they call it boxer steps, right? So it's actually to give your you know, one side, the calves, a, a rest, mm -hmm. and then switch over. So you just keep hopping around instead of strictly two feet together. Yeah. So and let's say before the rope comes into play, with my pens, yep. how, how can I practice that to make sure I'm kind of like getting the movement and the rhythm down? Uh, with the hands, is it, is it just shifting the weight? You're talking about the boxer steps right now? Yeah. So we're gonna, uh, yeah, just shifting the weight. You imagine you're sitting on, you know, standing on one leg, standing yeah. on other leg. So that's how you're gonna be switching. Same, yeah, okay. same way. And then you can start to like mix it up. Da -da -da, yeah, show just off hopping. Your socks. So the good thing is, without a rope, you will never be making any <laughs> mistakes at I'm all. I'm not going to trip <laughs> over it. So that's yeah. not a bad thing, to be fair. Okay, so then of course, building up from that, you have obviously your different types of stuff. And I'm sure people can check out Cheryl's Instagram for rope inspirations, you know, like your high knees, your jump steps, and swinging it all around the place. But thank you so much for joining us for thank our you. skipping rope break it down. If you're starting to pick up skipping as well and working out from home, tag us. We want to see all your technique-driven stuff. We've got more stuff coming up a little bit later on. See you then. Without a rope because A, it means I don't break anything in the house and B, it means I don't trip over, make mistakes or give myself whiplash on the back of my calves. Anyway, we're going to head off for a quick break, but stay with us here on The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara.
and welcome back. Thanks, Thanks. for sticking us, oh, sticking with us here sticking on the morning with us, show. Sticking it out with us here yeah. on the morning show. Um, I've learned how to be a graceful dancer-ish, sort of. We use when, the dance quite. Yeah, when I when she when she says <laughs> dance, we use that term Move. quite loosely. Uh, we also had a great chat with Esther uh, to learn a little bit more about life in the Netherlands at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And I nailed my skipping skills. Yes, you did. You absolutely <laughs> did. And Alan Wu's plus 10 challenge. If you haven't jumped on that bandwagon yet, it's not too late. You don't have to start at 220. You can always start from the beginning. Start with 10 today, do another 10 tomorrow, and then another 10 after that. Um, Barbara, I think we should start. Huh? I think I we mean, should start. Yeah, OK. We're going to start <laughs> doing push-ups, and we will keep you posted on our progress. I think I agreed to that one. You can follow Kelly the progress on the hashtag plus 10. You can follow her progress. Make sure you join us tomorrow. What's coming up, Barbara? Uh, we've got lots of stuff. So earlier on in the week, we had Brad Robinson, the owner of Ritual, come in. So tomorrow, we've got Shrek, one of his trainers, going to work on some mobility work. And we've also got Tough Nut Thursday, bringing us physical and mental endurance in these times. And not forgetting, watch cooking at 4 p.m. for all the dinner inspiration you need. That's yeah, it right. from us today. But we will see you tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be back on Friday as well. That's no public right. holiday for us. We're going to be keeping you company all the way through the week, every day, same time, same place, 10 a.m. on Get Active TV. Which means that you can stay safe, stay strong, and stay, stay at, at home. home.